it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and it's walkabout Wednesday in my Vista succulent garden and I am obsessed with my ghosty in my grapefruit pot. Look, look guys, it's a grapefruit. How about that, right? I think, oh yeah, here's another one. And there's another one. So I have two grapefruits on my grapefruit tree, but look at this ghosty. Can you even with that? And then look at my poor sad imbricatas down here. No bueno. They are toast. Dang it. I love that plant, but it is a hard one for me to grow. This is my falling waters. The falling waters bloomed out a couple of months ago and I just cut off the bloom spike and I'm still enjoying the plant. Over yonder here, I have my Mangave Pineapple Punch. Remember I bought a couple of these and I put one over here and then I've got another one over on the other side of the garden. I just kind of wanted to compare climates and exposures and see how they did. Here's a couple of little agave attenuatas. This is not the true variegate like the one I have, but I don't know what it is, Stripe or something. But aren't they cute? They were just a couple little baby cuttings I stuck in here and they're looking really, really good. Okay, moving on. Ugh, my shadow, sorry. This Echinopsis, um, I don't know guys, I thought, oh, this is cool, it's variegated Echinopsis, but I don't know, is it okay? I don't know, it's looking really super stressed, like down here, um, a little loose in there but it's got it's got some new growth inside here so I'm gonna keep hope alive right on that my Petalanthus bracteatus I have been watering like crazy trying to get it to leaf out and it isn't really doing it I don't know if it's just because it's in a pot. This is a plant that really benefits from a lot of water to look its best in the summertime. I'm not gonna give up on it. I still like it, but I would like it better if it was leafier. And then my beautiful collectibles. All of them appear to be thriving, I'm quite pleased. The only reason I don't have anything in this pot is there's no drainage hole. I have, to, I have to have Greg drill that for me. Um, over here, everything is looking golden. I'm thinking about yanking out this milii right here. It's not really doing it for me anymore. I love this fire glass and all of my gems. And I have, you know, like this Medusa's wig, the Euphorbia flangelii here that crested. And look at the crest. It's so gorgeous. And this baby's necklace. See them baby's necklace? The thing is huge. And the way it's just, you know, snaking down that, that rock is so incredible. And this Petalanthus macrocarpa or carpus just kind of doesn't really do much. It just sits there and I'm here for that. Uh, it, oh God dang it though, look, I think it's got more scale. Yep, darn it. Look here, see all this? Can you see that? It's glary, I know, I'm sorry, but look at all that scale. Dang it. I'm gonna have to treat this with some bear tree and shrub or hit it with some ortho home defense or something. I don't understand why this thing keeps getting scale. I think, I feel like it's in a really good spot, but whatever. Um, my little Mangave praying hands, remember this? 
I was one of the plants that was sent to me from Walter's Gardens. And I have one in a pot and one in the ground. And I wanted to see, you know, how they did. I feel like this is growing a little bit. It's such a cool plant. And I went ahead and did it. I moved my little attenuata um, rhino, my little agave compacta white rhino that I got from Owl at Botanic Wonders. I put it in the ground. I did it. So hopefully it will do us proud there. Okay, moving around. I did, I did a little cleanup over here earlier in the week. This lime tree right here throws off mad leaves, but the smell of the blossoms is ridiculous. I love it. And this area just looks a lot better. This cactus was kind of flopping. So I set some rocks up behind it to kind of anchor it in place. And it looks like it's going to give me a little cute little pink flower right there. And see, this macrocarpus doesn't have any scale on it at all. So I don't know. I do not know. Okay. Uh, just by way of update, we are going to be on a project in Chula Vista tomorrow and Friday. So be sure and tune in for that. It's going to be a really cool little project. It's going to be a little front yard installation. And this Aztec King Mangave just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I guess at this point, I'm just going to let it ride. The Aluaudia Procera arms are really starting to take off. It's popping out arms all over. Ooh, there's even one way up top. See that? Right there. So, you know, I don't know. I've told you I kind of like it as a single, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna let it ride. I'm gonna let these arms just do it, whatever they want, and we'll see how it goes. How's that? Look at this beautiful creature. My Crassula Argentia Sunset. And then these Echeveria Harmsii are just about to bloom. Aren't they so pretty? Look at that. Remember, I'm going to show you what to do with this plant when it's done blooming. When it's done blooming. Beautiful, beautiful. Everything's looking good. It's been not stupid hot, but you know, very warm. I think that's what I would call it. I would call it very warm here. Yeah, in this, I feel like decisions are gonna need to be made here too because my gorgeous Ramosissima continues to grow like crazy. And it's really starting to crowd with the, my Agave Attenuata Virigata. They're, you know, they're starting to get really chummy and I don't know about it, guys. It's fine right now, but we'll have to figure that out, I think, at some point. Let's check on our babies, shall we? Let's see how our babies are doing back here. Look at that. The nursery looks good. I've got one, two, three, looks like four, five. Five babies in there. Fantastic. Love it. Okay, and then these, these collectibles over here are all looking great. Really happy with those. And the Pacopodium Lamarii Crest is insane. Look at that. It's one of the coolest plants I've ever had the pleasure to see. And let's just skip around over here. Here's another Harmsii that's getting ready to bloom. So pretty. And this ruchia right here has done so stinking well. It hasn't got leggy, there's been no dieback. I tell you what my secret is, but I don't know. And then this mangave pineapple punch, you can see in this location in the garden, it's a little more erect. 
I don't know. It's not, you know, the leaves aren't quite as open. It's a little more closed up. I love the look. I don't know, you know, I think this does get a maybe a little warmer over here, possibly. Uh, not sure. The euphorbia that I put in this pot where I took the trigona out is looking fabulous. I haven't put any water on it or done anything to it. I'm just letting it go. Some of you had wanted to see my garden of death. And it is extremely anticlimactic, guys. But if you want to see it, I'll show it to you. Around here, on the outside of my gate, <laughs> is where I throw project leftovers. It's really not very interesting at all. Look at this hot mess actually kind of a cool looking Cameroni eye right there. Here's a couple of the plants I pulled out um, of the garden last week and all of these what appear to be arborescence cuttings have been sitting here literally for months. I will be starting to work these into projects soon I promise. More really really stressed but beautiful Cameroni eye and then I'll show you this exciting view of my trash cans. It's so cute, right? And then over here I have a couple of aloe vera and more Cameroni eyes. These came from a client in Granite Hills in East, um, East San Diego County and they're little super stressed one gallons very cute and then here's the tapestry we we looked at this recently haven't done a darn thing except throw some water on it once in a while it's so interesting to me too you know we i showed you how these echeveria both echeverias obviously different varieties but how happy this green one is in the sun and how decidedly unhappy this blue one is in the sun. So not all echeverias are made the same, obviously. This ruchia also tight and very pretty, loving that. Okay, and then moving back this way. This is just a little something I put together um, with some leftovers. It's some oh, um, Crassula ovata and, you know, some little one gallons. Super cute right there. Very happy. And then over here, this little tapestry. It's, in, it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon right now, and you can see this is all in shade happy 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 plants but even though this is in shade in the afternoon the sunburst aeonium isn't the happiest look at all these leaves Ugh. clean that up the one in the back is much happier than the one in the front that gets hit with all of the sun in the earlier part of the day and i love this this little pot oh Portolacaria minima. How fun, right? So simple, so basic, but I really love that. And then over here, we got the fountain. Hannah and Greg leveled the fountain for me, and then I did, the other day I did a video where I kind of reworked it and, you know, pumped, pumped it up, fluffed it up a little bit, stuck some cuttings in. Super happy with that. Very, very happy with my new mangaves from Walter's Gardens, Queen for the Day, Navajo Princess. That one is Iron Man, and then in there is Dreadlocks, and they are all really doing great. It looks like this one, this Jaguar, is getting ready to bloom. So if, you're, if your um, mangaves bloom, 
whenever you feel like it, just cut the bloom spike. You know, you can let the plant, like I did with the falling waters in the back, just the plant should stay pretty for a while. And some of them throw off so many pups that you never have to remove them. You know, they just keep on prolificating, proliferating, prolificating, proliferating, whichever. Um, the bloom is, is kind of a nothing burger, spoiler alert. So, you know, you can let it go or not. It's really up to you. This is a lavender lady here. And this is a really good mid-sized mangave. It's one of my favorites because it doesn't get too big. She also throws off a lot of pups. So you can, you know, give them away or move them around in your garden, whatever. These collectibles that oh these get a lot of shade the further back you go the more shade they get but they are super happy to be here and then my shady pot of sansevieria tradescantia and a little aeonium really cool and then over here i've got my trigona and all of my my aloes these are just cuttings that i kind of stuck over here um, that I would press into service in installations if if I so desired or if necessary. I just adore this variegated aloe back here. Isn't that pretty? I want to kind of let that get its legs and pup out a lot more before I start taking pieces off of that to spread around. Yeah, and then the little cactus in the pots and the standing euphorbias are starting to make more of an impact and look a lot more interesting. So despite the fact that it's August and it's hot, I mean, I'm really pleased with the garden. It's looking good. I hope that you all are having a wonderful time in your gardens as well. As I said, be sure and tune in tomorrow to see what's up in Chula Vista. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity on Walkabout Wednesday with your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.